So this is Ezra Zankel, who is currently in first place in the Lightning Fleet at the Carolina Yacht Club. He's actually tied for first with me, but he beats me on the tiebreaker. <laughs> so I wanted to hear what he had to say, being a local Charleston sailor, about what he was thinking yesterday. Um, I think it was pretty clear uh, the first couple races which way was the right way to go um, once we started. I think at the beginning, a lot of us thought going left and getting out of the Ashley uh, would have been a smart move because we would have been able to hit the Cooper Tide going out, um, which would have pulled us towards the mark a little earlier than the guys that went right. But um, it really turned out that going right and staying in the Ashley a little bit longer really helped getting out there. Um, I think uh, the later those our first two races weren't weren't as good as our last two. We had two fives and then we ended up with two firsts. Um, and I think the thing that changed on the first is uh, tuning wise, we realized we needed to uh, get a little more point, a little more power. And on the Fisher cut, uh, when in doubt, if you're not balanced, you just pull on more wire um, if you're feeling held. So that helped us do that. And then we kept our backstay in check as well. And the bow is a lot more balanced, a little stiffer going through all the chop. Um, and then, you know, we figured out that the wind had uh, been oscillating a little bit. Um, and so upwind again, we just kind of tried to stay in the current. But downwind, the, um, probably the bigger factor was we had this mooring, this big yellow mooring buoy um, that we had to pass going downwind. And so we would set our kite and head downwind in the same direction relative to the breeze. And we noticed that every time we were getting further and further inside of that buoy while on starboard tack. So um, clearly, you know, it's, it's oscillating over. And uh, so we were able to hold that line for longer um, while a lot of the fleet, not everyone, um, but a lot of the fleet kept the same line going high because of the chop they wanted the power. But we just kept it low and tried to surf waves. Um, and that, that was a factor too. Um, I think we actually went to the unfavored gate because the wind had shifted. And that gave us some big gains because since the wind has shifted, once we tacked over onto the port. Um, so you mean the starboard gate? Yeah. Yeah, we, we did it, even though you had to jive to go into it and it was kind of a crash bang, but it was like three yeah. boat lengths, I thought closer. Yeah, because you were coming in from that side. You yeah. really wanted to wait coming downwind so long to jive. It was hard to get to the other gate anyway. Yeah. So. Um, we took yeah. the first gate, the first race, just so we didn't have to jive again. Yep. And, uh, but after that, we got bolder. Yeah, yeah, and that was really the way to go. I think for us, the, the roundings were definitely pretty messy going in that gate, but um, they were far enough apart. And the, the fact was that when the wind shifted um, over to the left side of the course, you could just come around and tack and you'd already made gains. Yeah. So um, I think that really helped uh, secure, you know, the first place the last two races. Otherwise, if we'd gone to the other gate, I think we might have lost it. Yeah. Uh, so strategy was just these very little things all over the course all day, and eventually they added up. Well, good sailing, and yeah. let's not kill I'm each other. I'm looking forward to racing against you today. <laughs>